So welcome back everybody. This is a video for chapter 13. Uh, chapter 13 is all about comparing two population parameters. This is continuing our study of inference, um, which we've been doing in chapters 10, 11, and 12. And just to remind you that what do we mean by inference? Inference is using a statistic to estimate an unknown parameter. We'll be doing this a lot. Really the remainder of the year is all about inference. And so uh, the inference toolbox is going to become your new best friend. Just a little bit more about inference before we kind of start doing anything new. Inference, and this is kind of, there's a few new things in this uh, chart. Inference really comes in two big categories. We have confidence intervals and we have hypothesis tests. Last chapter, I drew, kind of branched off into means and proportions, both for hypothesis tests and for confidence intervals. Now we're actually going to go one branch further and we talk about means. There's actually two different types of problems. There's problems involving one mean and problems involving two means. And notice it's the same thing for confidence intervals as it is for hypothesis tests over here. Similarly, there's when you talk about proportions, there's problems involving one proportion and two proportions. And again, true for confidence intervals, true for hypothesis tests. So we kind of have eight different inference toolbox procedures, although certainly you get a sense that they're going to be very related. Okay, which ones have we done? Well, in chapter 10, we learned about confidence intervals for one mean and confidence intervals for one proportion. So we've done these in chapter 10. In chapters 11 and 12, we learned about hypothesis tests for one mean and hypothesis tests for one proportion. We did those in chapters 11 and 12. What chapter 13 is about is everything with the red asterisk. It's everything involving two means or two proportions. The way this uh, chapter is broken down is all the two means stuff is section 13.1 and all the two proportion stuff is section 13.2. So what I'm going to do in this video is work you through an example involving a hypothesis test for two means. So we're, we're right here. Although once you kind of see it, you'll realize that actually doing this over here is pretty easy too. Okay, so here's our first example. Let me just kind of read it to you. A researcher relieves that country music radio stations play more song than rock radio stations. She conducts research in which she randomly uh, samples both types of radio stations for an hour and counts the number of songs the station plays in that hour. Mm -hmm. Here's some data that she collected. So country music, you can, can kind of read all Here's the rock ones. Is there evidence that country stations play more songs than rock stations and provide statistical evidence, which is a fancy way of saying use the inference toolbox. First of all, notice that even though there's kind of two lists going on, this is not matched pairs, right? Matched pairs is where you'd have one list, two lists, and then L3 would be the differences. When you think about matched pairs, it's the mean of the differences. It's the mean of what's going on in L3. These problems are very different. It's not the mean of L3. It's the mean of L1 compared to the mean of L2. You notice that it's, it's, there's a distinction between the mean of the differences and the difference of the means. Here we actually have two different groups going on. We're not calculating the mean of L3, we're calculating comparing L1 to L2. So it's a little bit tricky. If this was a match pairs design, forget everything we did in chapter 13 and go back to chapters uh, 11 and 12. But this is two sample means, so we're going to move on. And This is kind of the new problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through this whole example using the inference toolbox. It's a little bit different. Um, there's some different formulas and things but the inference toolbox should seem pretty familiar. Okay, so here's step one of the inference toolbox. Our unknown parameter now is, notice we're talking about two means. So our unknown parameter for these problems will always be mu1 minus mu2. And what does that mean? It's the difference in population mean number of songs played, and then I write country minus rock, just to make sure it's clear which way I'm subtracting. Our null hypothesis, again, is always in terms of what you wrote up here. So if this is your unknown parameter, that's the same thing that goes here. And our, our null hypothesis is actually that it's not true that country, country and rock stations are the same. So you can write mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Just think about that for a second. If country and rock were the same, when you subtracted them, you would just get zero. You could also write this as mu1 equals mu2. Some books do it that way. I will always write it this way because that's kind of I think it makes it a little bit easier later on, but feel free to write it this way. Full credit on the test and the AP exam if that helps you. I just will always kind of do it this way. Okay. What's our alternative hypothesis? Well, we think that country music song, country music stations play more than rock. 
So mu1 minus mu2, when you subtract them, you get greater than zero. If you get, if you wanted to do it this way, that would be fine too. And name the procedure, you can call it a two-sample t-test, or kind of more formally, it's a hypothesis test for the difference of two population means. Either one of those is kind of okay. Okay, now we go about checking our conditions, and you're going to love this, because basically all you have to do is exactly what you did before when you were doing t-test stuff, only you have to do it twice. So, basically, whenever you were checking SRS, now we have to do it twice. I'll assume both samples are simple random samples. We have to assume that both, we have to check that both ends are bigger than 30. So I wrote, since n1 is 36 and n2 is 45, hey, they're both bigger than 30, so therefore the t distribution is appropriate. Basically, the condition step here, oh, look, this should have been Roman numeral 2, shouldn't it? Roman numeral 2. Oh, yeah, we just learned, we just figured that out. Okay, <laughs> back to the problem. Um, and then, so we have, you have to do this twice, this twice, and this twice. Since there are hundreds of radio, hours of radio, more than, you know, 10 times whatever, we can assume that hours are independent within country and within rock. This new red thing down here is a new kind of way we have to think about independence. Here, we're checking if they're independent within country and within rock. And then we also want to make sure that country and rock as a big category are independent of each other. So we just write, it's, here there's no kind of mathematical check, it just seems logical that the songs played on country stations and the songs played on rock stations are independent of each other. So this is the one little wrinkle I wrote it in red. You have to do what you were doing before to make sure you're independent within each sample. And then also just kind of a logical condition that actually things are independent of each other. And there'll be some problems we'll, we'll kind of discuss where it ends up not being the case. Okay, just one thing I wanted to mention before I kind of move on, because we're going to see some crazy notation in a second. Sometimes our book, um, rather than using 1 and 2, uses like C and R for country and rock. I've seen problems where if the two samples involves males and females, they use M and F here. So just kind of quickly, when you see this, I will, for this example, because we're starting, I always use the 1, 2 notation, but it might be clearer to say C and R, because then you wouldn't have the problem of forgetting, wait, is, is number one country or is number one rock? I'm all mixed up, I'm not sure. If you did it this way, you would never forget. So I'm going to do it with the 1s and 2s, because that's the way the formulas are written in our book. But in class, I'm often going to do it like this, just so we don't get confused. Okay, so here's the one big new formula. Um, we've been all along. We've been talking about something called the standard deviation of the statistic, or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. From now on, a synonym, because this kind of gets a little bit wordy, we're going to call this idea standard error. So when we were talking about just the old problems in chapter 11, the standard error was s over the square root of n. When we were talking about one mean, again. This is kind of what in the bottom of the hypothesis test formula, or you know, the in the as part of the margin of error in the confidence interval formula. When we were talking about proportions, it was the square root of pq over n. Well, here's the new formula. When we're talking about these new problems with two means, our formula is a big old square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. This is what's going to be on the bottom of the confidence, sorry, on the bottom of the hypothesis test, and as and it's going to be plus or minus t star, and then that. So that makes, you think about our formulas for confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. When we were doing one mean, it looked like this. For confidence intervals, when we were doing one mean, it looked like this for uh, hypothesis tests. We'll now kind of compare, right? Our, and here's our new formulas. When we're doing, when we're doing confidence intervals, the x bar becomes, we have two x bars, so x bar 1 minus x bar 2. The plus or minus is the same, the t star is the same, and then here's this new standard error formula that replaces this one. This is what it is for one mean, this is what it is for two means. Now that we're doing hypothesis tests, it's still t's. Instead of x bar, we have two x bars, so it's x bar 1 minus x bar 2, minus mu, again we have two mu's, mu 1 minus mu 2, and then instead of this, we have this big old thing on the bottom. Okay, so this right here is the formula we're going to use for this problem involving rock and country. So here are our calculations. The chart here gives us all the numbers we want. So this is n1, this is n2, this is x bar 1, this is x bar 2, this is s1, this is s2. So here's the formula I wrote on the previous page. It's, it's hideous, I agree. Plugging in everything I know, right? 
x bar 1, x bar 2. Here's something interesting. Why is there a 0 here? Because what do we think is true about this? Our null hypothesis is that mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. So this is almost always 0 in the formula. In fact, I've, every single example I've ever seen, you replace this with 0 because that's what you think is true. Okay, now go to the bottom. S1 squared, 2.2 squared over N1 squared plus S2 squared over uh, N2 squared. And of course, the calculator is going to do this all for us. We get t equals 2.42. That's, that's a t number. We draw our t curve. I'll talk about where I got this degrees of freedom in a second. And we get a p-value, just like we did before, of about 0 0.0090. Okay, and of course the calculator does it all for you. Here we're going to two-sample t-test. Okay, two-sample t-test. Compare that to t-test when we had just one sample. Now we have two samples, so we're going to two-sample t-test. In this problem, we had stats. If you actually had the data, it would ask you for two lists, L1 and L2, but we just have the stats. Punch in everything we know, just like, we, just like you know, exactly from that chart. Um, we think that mu1 is greater than mu2. It's the kind of thing about our null hypothesis. It's a greater than symbol. Okay? It's going to ask you this question about pooled. For the purposes of AP stat, always say no to pooled. We may talk in class about exactly what that means. Yeah, we may not. But just for the purposes of AP stat, it's always always say no to pooled. And then we just go to calculate, and it cranks at all the numbers. Notice here's that 2.42 number I got. Here's the p-value. And here it actually tells us degrees of freedom. Turns out for these two kind of problems, normally our formula for degrees of freedom was n minus 1. But now we have a situation where we have two n's, right? So which one do we use for degrees of freedom? Well, here you can see we kind of have two choices, okay? You can either pick the smaller of n1 or n2 and then do, n, do that minus 1. So if we had done it that way, we would have gotten that our degrees of freedom would have been 36 minus 1 equals 35. That's actually a very often called the conservative approach because it gives you a smaller number. Um, and there's actually a more a mathematical, a more kind of solid thing to do, which is do this totally bizarre formula that's in your book that the calculator's doing and results in this number right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let the calculator do it. Um, but if you didn't have a calculator, you would just use 35, which is the smaller of them. And again, that's usually called the conservative approach. Okay, and then I put this paragraph up here. It's the same paragraph we've written before. It's exactly the same thing now. There is a 0.9% chance of getting a difference of sample means of x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Let me kind of just show you here, right? Here I wrote the p-value. There's the p-value. Getting a sample, at least it's unusual. That's this right here, right? or more due to random variation if mu1 minus u equals 0. Since this is unlikely, we will reject the null hypothesis. And then we do it in English. There is evidence that what you wrote in your null hypothesis, or your alternative hypothesis is true, or here we try to do it in English, the country stations play more songs than rock stations. Okay? Paragraph's exactly the same. You'll get a lot of practice with it in class. I know it's a little bit foreign now, but trust me, you'll get a lot of practice with it. Okay, how do we do it for proportions? Well, that's the next video, right? Wait for section 13.2, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Woohoo!